Pfizer. Time now to turn to Tariq Nasheed, producer, director of Hidden Colors. It's a five-part documentary series. It's got to be the definitive history of black America, I think. It's a fantastic film series. Check it out. Tariq, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Hey, it's my pleasure, Max. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, I've got to ask you. I've, I've got to pick your brain, and we've, I've got to help me understand what's happening with these Karens, okay? The Karen phenomenon. I've been, yeah. I've been going on social media, and I see all these white women standing in parking lots or in, uh, you know, the supermarket, and they have, like, some kind of psychotic breakdown because yeah. some, a black person's holding a camera to them, and all they're saying is, what's going on, Karen? And they melt into a puddle of tears. What is happening? Tell me. Yeah, a lot of these women are actually going out instigating a lot of incidents with black people. Because right now, a lot of the, uh, the Trump supporters, they're trying to do their part to maintain systematic white supremacy. And these Karens are doing their job. And a lot of these Karens are very deadly and dangerous at this point. There was a situation yesterday in Michigan where a Karen bumped into a 15-year-old black girl. The mother of the girl confronted her. And then the Karen ultimately pulled a gun on the mother and the daughter. So these Karens, we trivialize that a lot. But these women are very, very dangerous. Now we're starting to see today, as a matter of fact, in Virginia, one Karen was charged with making a false report because she lied and said that two black people assaulted her. Um, another Karen was in an incident in a parking lot where she blocked a black woman. She was charged. I think this was in Jacksonville, Florida. So now, very recently, some of these Karens are starting to be charged. The thing is, there has always been a Karen phenomenon in this country. Going back to Tulsa, a lot of the racial riots that happened in this country were because white women were going around lying about a false, fictitious crime that a black person um, did not commit. So this whole camera thing has been going on for a long time. We're just now seeing it because of camera phones and camera video. Okay, you're a filmmaker and a content creator, and yes. you go out and you make films, and the premise, as we've discussed before, is that American politics is rooted in white supremacy. And you go out and you make films and you document that story. And now, with these cameras and these phone cameras, what you've been talking about as an artist and a filmmaker in your films suddenly is right in everybody's face. True or false? And they're absolutely true. As we see now, because of the corona pandemic, a lot of people are panicking, and the white supremacists can not really hide their nefarious deeds anymore. So a lot of the things they do now is on the upfront. They have to go out and just be very bold with a lot of things. And it, we've always warned people in black society that we're criminalized not because of anything that we've done. We're criminalized because of inherent systematic white supremacy. People in the dominant society are just not charged with certain things that black people are charged with. So as we see with the COVID phenomenon, we have these social distancing laws and these stay at home orders and these, um, wear your mask orders, and we see that this these orders are usually enforced against black people. We've seen case after case after case all over the country where groups of white people are walking around with no masks, they're cavorting with each other, but law enforcement will skip over them and go target a handful of black people and brutally arrest them and brutally detain them. As we saw with some of the uprisings out here, um, there was a lot of looting going on out throughout the United States. Most of the looting was done by a lot of white people out here. A lot of the fires, a lot of the arson, it was started by white people. Many people believe that white police officers were instigating a lot of things, particularly up in Minnesota. There were um, undercover cops seen starting fires. Now, what the police are doing, they're going back weeks later to prosecute people um, based on their investigation, and almost all the people they're prosecuting now just happen to be black. So they're being very blatant with the racial disparity right now. So it's something that can't be denied at this point. You know, I've been an observer of the civil rights movement my almost my whole life. I'm 60 years old, and I've seen it ebb and flow, and uh, I've seen uh, achievements made, and then I've seen achievements lost. I've seen wealth aggregated in the black community and then wealth stolen from the black community. I want to get your take on where we are in the whole cycle of this, because Black Lives Matter, it's a huge movement, or I, I, my perception is that it's a huge movement. Where does it fit into the last 50 or 60 years of the movement? How would you place it, Tariq? 
Well, right now, Black people are trying to get resources this time. See, in the 1960s, the, the people were, were angling for civil rights and really integration because they thought that the antithesis to segregation would be integration, and integration would fix the problem. So we have to be very careful with words. Segregation is just another word for white supremacy because there was no real segregation. White people could go anywhere they wanted to go. Black people were the ones who were quote unquote segregated, which means segregation is a code word for white supremacy, just like apartheid. Apartheid is a code word for white supremacy. So the antithesis to white supremacy is supposed to be black empowerment. How do you get black empowerment? You have to, you have, to have an economic base first. So this is why now there's a big reparations movement. Now, the so called black, let's be very clear about what Black Lives Matter is, because when you talk about Black Lives Matter, there's deliberate confusion because you have Black Lives Matter, the movement, which are people in the streets saying that, hey, our lives matter, the hashtag. Then you have Black Lives Matter, the organization that's actually funded by a lot of white liberal groups and the Democrats. That's totally different from what's going on in the streets right now. And the media likes to conflate the two. The Black Lives Matter organization, their priority is social integration and LGBT issues and immigration issues, issues that actually undermine Black society. So this is why we, we have to be very clear not to conflate the movement and the organization with what's going on out here. Back in the 60s, there was a lot of talk in the mainstream media and amongst politicians that the Black rights movement, the civil rights movement, the Black empowerment movement was somehow a Russian plot. Yeah. And um, these days, in the in the wake of the Russia Gate hoax uh, that we all are aware of at this point, again we hear this idea that the black community in America is not really unhappy. They're they're t totally happy with everything. They're just being instigated by foreign influence, Russian influence. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's an old um, trope from the white supremacists. They like to believe that, okay, black people are not shutting down these institutions. Black people are not getting these statues and things taken down. Black people are not revising history on their own. Um, to assage our own ego as a white supremacist, we have to put it on another white person. Well, it's the white Russians. It's the white communists. It's the... Um, the Russians who were behind Dr. King, they were real big on that. So they, there always has to be this nefarious, liberal, white person behind the scenes in order to make the white supremacists feel better about the fact that black people out here in the streets making a change. Even during the Haitian Revolution, they didn't want to believe that it was the Haitians who rose up against the white supremacists. They had to say, well, it was some, it's some other white people doing this. It's white abolitionists who's behind this stuff. So in the minds of the white supremacists, they always have to find a, a white supervillain behind the scenes orchestrating everything to make them feel better about getting... Um, um, justice from black people. Right. And and again, let me kind of return to a theme here, because what you're saying and your documentaries dig into this uh, is providing a broader context for uh, a conceit of American politics, which would come under the heading of white supremacist. And yeah. that's not something people want to confront. And it's something people would like to dismiss. But these Karen videos are really repugnant and confirm, you know, this idea in quite stark terms. Uh, and and uh, I hope this starts to, you know, get the dialogue to a much healthier place. Now, you mentioned uh, reparations there. And, uh, of course, this is a big topic, and um, there's a couple of ways to look at this. One idea was no taxation without reparations, right? So the black community could go on a tax strike and say, look, we're going to withhold tax until we get reparations, or we're going to uh, go at it that way. It gets to the economic empowerment issue. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, there's a few things to do. Number one, we definitely have to get cash payments, just like Native American tribes, just like Jewish people. They got cash payments, just like other groups. There was a white woman recently who's father was a part of the Civil War. She just died a few weeks ago. She was still getting um, checks from the Civil War. 
So they have the money. When, when we talk about the trillions of dollars needed to start the reparations package, they try to hem and haw and say they don't have it. Now, when this COVID thing broke out, they magically came up with $10 trillion to throw at everybody. So the money is there. Um, we can start with cash payments. Also, we can start with land allotments. Also, we can start with business development, specifically for Black people. And we got to say specifically for Black people, because Biden recently talked about reparations where we forced him to talk about it. But then he slipped in. If I talk about reparations, we're going to talk about it for Native Americans, too. See, that's a backdoor Trojan horse that they use to undermine us. First of all, Native Americans, they got reparations. Also, Native Americans owe Black people reparations based on the Treaty of 1866. Also, the Native Americans were, many of them were slaveholders, so they owe because of that as well. So there's all types of different ways to get these reparations payments going to foundational Black Americans specifically. The first way is going to be through cash payments. All right. Now, on this uh, topic of reparations and money and um, Black America, I don't know if you've seen Isaiah Jackson's new book, Bitcoin and Black America, talking about Bitcoin. You know, you and I have been talking about Bitcoin, you know, informally for a few years now. Yeah. And um, his point is that the black community is just basically saying, we, we, we're just quitting. You know, we're tired. We don't want to even try anymore. We're just going to become self-sovereign. We're going to embrace Bitcoin, which is a hard currency that nobody can confiscate. It's unconfiscatable. And we're just going to rebuild uh, using this money, this currency, Bitcoin. Uh, so my question is, um, where are you on this thinking at all? Is there, have, you, uh, have you seen that uh, particular volume? I've, have you, I've seen that argument. I've seen that argument before. And what we want, we want the same thing they took. Now, when, when they were beating our foundational Black American ancestors, they didn't get Bitcoin. They got money. When they were enslaving and raping and selling our children, they didn't get Bitcoin. They got money. Chase Bank was built from slave money, not Bitcoin. They use money to build Build this economy from the labor of black people. So we want the same thing that they took. We don't want to do all these little side deals. Let's just get the same thing going that they took, and we'll start with that. And then maybe later we can talk about cryptocurrency and all that. But let's start it off with cash payments, dollar bills. Right. Cut a check for $6 trillion, like you did a few weeks ago for the bankers on Wall Street. And then mm -hmm. y'all can decide, yeah, $6 trillion goes Absolutely. into Bitcoin. When they gave the corona, those corona packages they were giving everybody, they didn't give them Bitcoin. They sent checks. They need to Fine. send our checks, too. Fair yes. enough. All right. Tariq Nasheed, we got to go. Thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Hey, my, my pleasure. Anytime. All right. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report.